Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the semi-final in the Nordic Championship. We're now ready to start off with a fantastic game versus Ventus Esports and Assistance FK. And these players are having this big moment right now up against each other. Assistance FK being the only team to take one game against Ventus. But of course, Ventus being that number one spot in this group stage. A lot of things can happen. Henning, take us through all of this. Yeah, so we got Ventus Esports as the big main show of today. They've been the top team throughout the entire tournament. They've been the pre-tournament favorites with some very well-known experienced players who've been putting on some great results in the Nordic scene. But as you said, there's only one team that have beaten them so far, and that is Östersund, which are playing them today. Yeah, absolutely. So there is kind of a big of a bit of a grudge match between these two teams. But let's have a look at this bracket, because this is not the only game that we will be watching today. First out is, of course, the teams that we just mentioned, Ventus Esports versus Östersund's FK. You got a slight issue right here with this. There we go. Uh, there no, we actually, there we are. Right but there, there you can see the match in the bottom left. Yeah, right? exactly. Oh, and here we, we have it. Final Tribe versus Nuriki White will be the second best of three that we see here today. So starting off with this esports versus Estesun's FK. Now these players have fought through hell and high water to come up to this spot right now, especially Estesun's FK, which almost looked like it was going to be like a four-way tie for the top spots, but in the end, they managed to just barely power through to that fourth spot. Now up versus Ventus Esports, what can we expect from these two teams? Well, as you said, Estersun have been struggling and just barely were able to get that fourth-placed spot in the league, which means they have to place the number, play the number one team. I am expecting a lot of fireworks in these games. We've got two sort of aggressive teams, two teams that do not like to wait around, and especially I think a lot is going to come down to the mid lane, because both of these teams like to play a lot around the mid lane, so Adept for the side of Östersund, and Chris Cornett for the yeah. side of Ventus, those are the two players to look out for in this game, in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely, and both of these two players have had an enormous impact in their previous games. Both teams like to play around the mid lane, so a lot is going to come to the jungle matchup as well between these two teams. Which team will have the priority in the jungle matchup, and which team will be able to set up to make things happen? Yeah, a lot's going to come down to who has the pressure early on, and we know made for the side of Ventus. He's known as a Nidalee player. I would love to see some Nidalee or some other aggressive junglers who can really put down the pressure early on and then be able to affect that mid lane, because I spoke a lot about these mid laners. I'm going to keep mentioning it, because I talked to both of them before the game. I asked both Adept and Chris Cornett, who is the better mid laner? Chris Cornett was really confident. I'm better by far. I'm by far the better mid No surprise, mid really, that he's yeah. going to say that. That's no surprise, but Adept was a bit more humble. Yeah, if we look at previous results, I think I'm slightly better. That's so actually, uh, that's interesting, actually, because, yeah. yes, if you look at the previous results, and especially that Östersund's FK were able to win versus Ventus Esports 2-0 in the group stage, that actually kind of speaks to lengths about Adept knowing what he's talking about. But, of course, Chris Cornett, I mean, he has this long, um, he's, very, he's a veteran in the scene. He has a long career and he knows he's He's pretty he's young, doing. but he's still a veteran. Yeah, exactly. Like, well, that is the thing with these players. Like, they've been playing, they can be like 18 years old and still having played for like many years. And since most of these players have a fairly short career in esports, you can actually call someone a veteran almost after like three years or something playing professionally, you will know they're, they're definitely veterans. Yeah, for sure. And a lot of these players are in that situation. Another matchup that I think we should mention is the wild card for Ventus. And uh, when I say that the wild card event is, I think you should know who I'm hinting at. Yeah, absolutely. For the top lane you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, exactly, exactly. About sleeping. Yeah. Because he's been doing some very good things and some not very good things. Yeah, I mean, sleeping did tweet himself that he didn't have the best game in their uh, game versus uh, oh, if the final tribe. It was uh, for Ventus Esports. It was their final game of the group stage. Yeah. And sleeping... I mean, he looked really strong from time to time, and then you could all of a sudden see him, like, over-pushing, getting caught out, one, one versus three for absolutely nothing. His team was nowhere on the map where they could pressure any objective, having three enemy team members down at the bot side, not going for Baron or anything. So these are, of course, his individual mistakes, but also kind of tells us, tells us a lot about how the team synergy 
works for Ventus Esports. On the other hand, Assassin's FK, their teamwork has definitely been strong, but looking at the individual players, we have a little bit of deficiency when in comparison to Ventus Esports. I gotta agree with you right there. I think that the uh, stronger individual players are definitely on Ventus, and we'll see which picks they're gonna be bringing out. The Draven ban against Unforgiven, nothing unexpected. It's been banned every game against us in this tournament. Yeah, I don't expect to see that change. Anyway, I mean, it's a strong ban versus him knowing exactly what he's going, what I'm going to do with the bot lane. Also, the Thresh versus Quickset, not a big surprise either. Yeah, for sure. Other big picks that we're looking for is obviously the Lucian, as we're still on 9.3. So he's definitely one of the, if not the strongest champion in the game. Uh, so I would expect that to come out as the last ban for Esther. So not sure you want to give that over to Chris Lund. Speaking of Chris Lund, he also enjoys these mages in the bottom lane. We did see him play Vagar with not the greatest of results, but that's still something to always keep an eye out for in the draft. Yeah, absolutely. He's been trying to do it and hasn't really worked out for him. Still, it is going to be banned versus him here, as soon as FK not wanting to play versus that bot lane. Ooh, they are actually going to let Unforgiven Gil go for the Lucian here, not first picking that champion. It's not a crystalline special by any means, I just think it's so strong in general that it's something that you might want to go for. But they're going to prioritize the Jace, which can be flexed for either Chris Cornet or Sleeping. And then I would expect a Lucian pick here together with a Yasuo. This is spicy, Sai. Oh, this is absolutely spicy. And Kreis has been the top laner picking up solo kills on champions like Scion and stuff like that. So I'm looking forward to seeing him versus Sleeping on this Jace. But this Yasuo pick is an interesting one. Could go to the bot lane, could go to the mid lane, and even to the top lane actually, depending on where you want to put that f kind of strong farming champion for the early stage until he gets his start to get his 100% crit. And also, not Lucian here either. Instead, go with the Galio for Shred. All right, so they are letting the Lucian go over to, to Crystal if he wants that. Otherwise, I would suggest them to pick a strong jungler here, something like a Sejuani. Could be very strong to secure a frontline, because when you've got the Jace, you really need a tank, a jungler, to be able to go together with that, if that is a Jace in the top lane. So I would enjoy Ventus to play with some sort of a frontline. I mean, it's definitely possible to play without a frontline, but it just becomes so much easier. And it's pretty good into the Yasuo as well. But there is the Shen, so a lot of flex picks going on that it can, of course, be a support or a top laner. Yeah, absolutely. Both sides of these teams going for the flex picks, not wanting to show anything. Adventures Esports, they have been struggling a little bit with the draft earlier in this tournament. Haven't always made that much sense, but looking right now at them, they look so much stronger than before. Setting up with these flexes, not really wanting to reveal anything too early. So they're starting to build a bit of a poke comp here with the uh, Jace and the Ezreal. You've got a lot of damage that can be applied from very long range, and then you're starting to build some sort of a defense for that with a Shen who can both provide a shield with the ultimate and then appeal a lot both with the taunt and with the uh, <coughs> with the uh, auto attack denying from the uh, W. So I would love for Estation to just pick a hard engage comp here. Just go Sivir Alistar or something for the bottom lane if this is indeed a Yasuo going to some other side. Now I'm realizing that it's probably going to be a Galio support. Uh, with the uh, Gragas in the jungle, but this Yasuo can still go pretty much anywhere. Yeah, absolutely. Also liking this Gragas pick, as Marcoon has been playing it earlier. Hasn't been the strongest just on the Gragas, but in general a strong jungler when it comes to putting on that early game pressure. Although, when falling behind, Marcoon has shown that he struggles knowing what to do. Yeah, and Gragas is a champion where you really need to, uh, if you're not fighting these engages, fighting the picks, there's not a lot you can do, so you really need to keep, go, keep that initiative going. And uh, speaking of that, we do have the Sejuani jungle ban, which I mentioned earlier. Definitely would be a strong pick for Ventus. Also, <coughs> I talked about the Nidalee for Maid. I don't think it's a great pick here into the Gragas, but it's a signature champion and it's a poke champion going very well together with the uh, Jace and the Ezreal. And a lot of people have mentioned Nidalee not being so strong so far in the current patch, and I would agree that it isn't, but we've also seen some great Nidalee games in the tournament, specifically Celestial Gaming having an amazing game with the Nidalee. Absolutely. So, I mean, she is definitely still a strong champion, just that there are other champions that are individually stronger, but in the correct scene setup with uh, enough bands towards the jungle definitely could work out, and we'll see if Maid is going to go for his signature pick. Now the Kai'Sa and the Lucian have been banned from the side of Ventus, and the Nocturne, the final ban from Assassin's FK. Sivir is the standard pick here for me if you're not looking to go for this Yasuo in the bottom side. It synergizes very well with these big engaging tanks, and Yasuo also likes the movement speed from her ultimate. A very strong AD carry in general, and if this is a Scion lock-in for the top lane, 
They are still going to be flexing this Yasuo between Unforgiven and Adept, but a uh, Sivir last pick would not be bad at all. On the other side, LeBlanc is the big standout champion for Priscorrent if he wants to take the skill matchup into Yasuo, but there's also the Corky, which he's been doing great on. Absolutely, and the big question is which of these two champions would be the more secure one looking at this composition. You don't know yet where Yasuo will be going, you can always have a guess, but not going knowing this, going in blind for it, is it going to be better go with a Corki or going blind in with a LeBlanc? I would think the LeBlanc pick is fine here if you really want that skill matchup into Yasuo. Because that is a uh, s very, very skill intensive and very volatile, which is something that we've been speaking about for these mid laners. They uh, both th think that they're the better player than the other mid laner, and there is actually going to be the quirky lock in. So, going to be going for more of the uh, safe farming route and then b having really good scaling together with some good synergy with the poke from SRL, Jace, and Quirky. That's going to be a lot of stuff coming flying at you from long range. And now, as soon we'll have to reveal, is this going to be a Yasuo in the mid lane or in the bottom lane? Yeah, absolutely. And this is an interesting one for us since FK because I still believe in the Sivir. You mentioned it. Here it is. They have so many ways to start engaging. And also, if they want to set up for a split instead, yeah. you also have the power from the Galio. You have the disengage that Agragas can provide as well. You have the extra strong synergy with the Scion, with the movement speed. And you all have this great synergy between these champions. You can stall forever with a Sivir. Yeah, I like that you mentioned the split pushing potential of this composition. You can put Yasuo in a side lane for us to show. And then if the Jace gets ahead, he should be able to match the Yasuo. But unless that happens, there's no one who can really answer the Yasuo in the one versus one. And then you've always got the Corky to come in to help you out in the side lane. But there's also the Shen, which you always have to take into consideration for Quickset here. It's not going to be the strongest early on in the laning phase, but it's going to be providing some great utility if it comes to a split pushing scenario. Absolutely. The dangerous thing, though, with playing a, with a Shen, especially Shen in the support position, is that if you fall behind a little bit too much and the enemy team can simply burst whichever champion you use your Stand United on, your Shen is going to be have much less of an impact. And even if you go with this Shen and you get a good engage and you get him into the back line, he's not going to be as tanky as a top lane Shen would be either. So they need to play really carefully around this team composition as he's really the only tank they have on their team. Otherwise, you have an Olaf. And Olaf's not going to be a tanky champion. So there are a lot of dangers going with this team composition for Ventus Esports. Yeah, I definitely don't think it's an easy team comp to execute. You've got three squishy champions, three poking champions, so as long as you can keep the range, never get engaged on, never get caught out of position, you can throw down that poke from Jace, Ezreal, and Corky, and then just be able to uh, force your enemies out, force the towers. They've got good sieging, but if it goes to uh, them making any sort of mistakes if they get engaged and if they get caught up position by a Sivir ulti Scion, that's going to be very hard to be able to disengage from. So I think that uh, Ventus, they've definitely picked themselves into a difficult situation. Absolutely. And also going with these kind of split pushing team compositions that Ventus have decided to go for, you also always have to worry about one of you making a mistake because it is enough for one single player on your team to make one mistake and your whole strategy falters. You need to wait for the player to respawn and then you need to reset. Meanwhile, your enemy team has sort of a point and click team composition where you can just run straight ahead with the Scion. You can engage with the Gragas, with the Predator and just run up against you. And that is something that they need to be very careful against. Yeah, I think this is a good composition for us, because they've got both primary and secondary engage. Galio works, works very well as secondary engage. So first, you got like the Scion going in or the Gragas flash Ying on the enemy backline. And then you got the Galio ulti on top of that. And that should be enough time to keep all of Ventus locked up for long enough for the damage of Yasuo and Sivir to just clean up the fight. The problem, potential problem for Sun though, is that they're both doing physical damage, both uh, Yasuo and Sivir. So if this uh, Olaf in particular, but also this Shen can stack up more armor, it's going to be pretty difficult for them to deal with. Yeah, absolutely. I definitely agree with you there. It's going to be quite difficult also to try to do something against Quickset on this Shen and with an Ezreal in the lane. It's going to be a very safe bot lane for Ventus Esports. Yeah, speaking of the bottom lane here, it's going to be pushing early on for Crystal, it looks like. But as we get a few levels here, this is an extremely strong shoving lane for Unforgiven and Shred. Sivir may be the strongest pushing AD carry, and Galio may be the strongest pushing support with a Q and the uh, passive auto attacks can go down. So they will have a lot of wave control when the first few levels are in, so they've unlocked all their basic abilities.
A good push from Chris Lin, though, is going to deny quite a few last hits from Unforgiven as he's yeah, under he's a lot of pressure versus this Chen. He's missed quite a few last hits so far, actually. That's a good point. Yeah, absolutely. So Chris Lin putting on the pressure down bot lane, up top lane. Christ again on his signature pick, the Scion. Is not going to have the best lane versus Jace, although he has gotten solo kills versus Jace players during this tournament. It was versus uh, Wazer. I think that he got the solo kill on the Urgot versus Jace, but I have a feeling that Sleeping wants to make up for his previous mistakes in the last games of the group stage, playing much more carefully this time around. This is a matchup where Jace is obviously going to be pushing, we're going to be proccing that Klepto, maybe even getting tower planings early, but that means that Ventus have to peel for the Jace in the indirect sense. You need to put wards on the top half of the map, you need to control the crab on the top half of the map, you need to track the enemy jungler because Kraga, Scion, that can very easily gank this squishy Jace. As it comes up, there is a ward. Will Sleeping be able to get away in time? Looks like it. Yeah, absolutely. Marcoon has long range. He will be able to go for this engage. Flashing forward now. And Sleeping flashed way too early in this situation. And he is going to fall. So that is the first blood, blood as Marcoon simply just walks up to the top lane. Well, that's just what I talked about. The need to give sleeping room in this top lane when you're going to be having this pushing klepto matchup into the Scion. And when Maid goes into the bottom side of the enemy jungle and finds the bottom half and sees that Marcoon isn't there, the call absolutely has to be made and the call has to be decisive that he is not on his bottom side. And then you need to figure out, okay, he's not on the bottom side, then he's probably going to be on the top side. Yeah, Marcoon now fighting one versus one with sleeping, but Christ, of course, is going to arrive. In this situation, Maid is there as well to get a with Priest Conat, but with the barrels, just gonna walk away from this. Yeah, getting the blue buff as well is pretty good here for the Gragas, both because you're getting some mana sustain yourself and you're denying it from Olaf, who's really reliant on that early mana. Shred goes for an engage, he might be taunted up and taking a bunch of damage here. Yeah, Shred taking a lot of damage, still wants to fight this, flashing forward, knowing they have enough damage to take this fight and the quick pick up now as Unforgiven was able to get the kill on Priest Lun. Fight in the mid lane as well, Priest Conant versus Adept. This is the matchup you were talking about earlier, but this bot lane ending up with one kill each for these two carries. The big difference is Unforgiven was able to survive through it all, so he got a few more losses from it, forcing the teleport from Priest Conant. Yeah, being able to get the push in there, maybe denying a few CS, probably beneficial for Unforgiven. And as we take a look at the mid lane, I think it's quite ironic that I talked so much about Adept and Priest Conant, how they're going to be able to be the uh, matchup that maybe decides the game here, and then we've been seeing kills in all other lanes but this <laughs> one. <laughs> well, that's oh, what happens, but oh, the flash forward adapt, showing that he can get the solo kills versus Priest Kuna. Priest Kuna did not respect the damage that Ayasu can dish out. Those are going to be quite a few lost hits that Priest Kuna will be missing in this lane, and a fantastic recall timing for adapt. He makes it look easy on the Yasuo, and we talked so much about it in the pregame. Who is the better mid laner? Adept said, it's probably me, and it looks like after that play, it's probably him, because Chris Cornet had no idea what's coming, had both the Valkyrie and the Flash available, available, but did not have the reflexes to dodge out on that in time, and the Yasuo was starting to snowball. That is bad news for Ventus, because remember what I mentioned, if this Jace gets ahead, if this Yasuo does not get ahead, Jace should be able to match him in the side lane. What's happened so far? Yasuo has gotten ahead and Jace has fallen behind. Yeah, this is not a good situation to start with for Ventus Esports. As Priest Conant previously said that he is the stronger mid laner now dying one versus one. It's not a good position for him, especially considering like what, what that will do with your morale as a team. Yeah, good thing for him is still that he did not burn the flash though, so still has that available should there be some return ganks here from Mark Kroon, who's just trying to level get level 6 here on this Gragas, then look for some sort of a play on the map, maybe even on towards the Sleeping, who is still pretty squishy on this Jace and does not have his flash from using that earlier and still going down. Yeah, absolutely. Although Sleeping died earlier, he's still been able to handle this lane so well, so he's quite far ahead just in terms of CS as he's handling the wave in a way that keeps Kreis a little bit on his toes. Can't really push up too far and trying to collapse the wave under his turrets and Sleeping simply just gonna freeze it and stopping Kreis from farming. Now this is the problem when you're playing versus a good Jace player. Yeah, he's gonna be pushing up the wave right now here and trying to... Oh, there's a flash engage! Oh, the flash engage is instantly going to burst made. 
as May did not flash away again. Marcoon simply is going to use this Gragas to its fullest uh, power as he just can flash forward with the body slam and set it up for Adept. Yeah, and May was level 4 right there when Adept was level 7. That's not the start you want on the Olaf being so far behind. And this is the Yasuo Snowball starting to come in. Pre-game, pre I thought that Ventus were definitely the clear favorites, but as of now, it's looking like Östersund has a pretty good lead. They've got a good scaling team come to got a snowballing Yasuo. What more could you wish for? Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like Ventus, they've been preparing for this so well. They know exactly what they are up against, and they know how they won their game versus Ventus Esports before. Östersund's FK, I mean, they know exactly how they won earlier, so they're just going to keep playing this strategy that they know works so well versus this team. And individually, we talked about it. I mean, as individuals, we have a farm lead in the bot lane for Kreeslin. We have a farm lead in the top lane for Sleeping. They handled the draft well, setting up for these uh, good team compositions. And then, well, when it comes to the fighting, when it comes to the roams, it's just as soon as FK always being one step ahead. Now Marku moving forward, missing most of their skill shots though, as Sleeping needs to run quite a bit up here, flashing away in a final to avoid the explosive cask, and Marku is simply going to be happy with that, I think, burning the flash for Sleeping. That was a pretty good escape from Sleeping actually there, getting away with a flash. I did not think that he was going to be able to get away right there, but just waiting for Marku to miss the body slam and then wait to flash until the explosive cast comes down, because as soon as that goes down, you know that if you flash, you're going to be knocked away. Now, Chris Current has a good tempo advantage right now with the mid lane push and the package. Yeah, absolutely. Also want to mention sleeping up top lane, as he has been handling this lane solo so well. Now, with the extra help from the Mountain Dragon as well, he's going to be able to deal so much damage with these turret platings up top side. Yeah, and we do see that it's four kills to one first to Shun, but Ventus actually has a C has a gold lead, mostly from the CS, which you can see both in the bot and the top lane, being quite substantial. But they've also got double Kleptomancy on the Jace and the Ezreal, so that is giving them a lot of this gold lead as well. So quite even game so far, even though Shun has been get, uh, allowed to get these kills. Yeah, absolutely. Also, actually, Chrislin also having the EXP advantage versus Unforgiven. So, a lot of things has been happening on this map. Playing well around these team compositions. And now, I think Ventus Esports have started to respect both these solo uh, matchup in the mid lane, but also Marcoon and his ganking potential on this Gragas. His mate has not really been able to keep up. Yeah, mate has not been able to pull anything off on this Olaf so far, and I'm a bit disappointed because He's slightly behind in CS and experience on the Olaf, which is supposed to have a lot of pressure early in pretty much every matchup. And this is not a great scaling pick. It's not like you're going to go to 30 minutes with the Olaf being 0, zero, zero and s being happy with that. No, you need to make the things happen. If you're just going to be farming, you could pick... I was going to say you could pick something like Sejuani. It was banned away, but you could pick that earlier or go for another more scaling jungler. Because of the Olaf, you need to make something happen. And I'm a bit disappointed because Maid, we know that he's very skilled. We know he's a great individual player. Just Olaf not working out for him in this game. Yeah, I think a lot of trouble happened with the solo kill in the mid lane and with the early ganking and sleeping dying topside, meaning that Maid has been a bit more careful on this Olaf than maybe he would have wanted to. Now, another gank down bot lane. Quickstep not going to be the main focus, still being taunted, still taking heavy damage. The ultimate is going to be used to keep Chrislin alive, so he just barely survives. And I thought that Assassin's FK would be going a little bit further for that kill. But in the end, he's going to burn a lot of summoner spells and Quickstep's ultimate. Yeah, burning the TP from sleeping as well. He was going to try to come down there, but was interrupted by Crysis. This is going to give Maid the opportunity to get the Rift Herald, though, because he did see Marcoon in the bottom lane. He need to hit him in the eye, man. Okay, he's going uh, to get it. It doesn't anyway. matter. He's just going to true damage his way through it. But yeah, I mean, Maid is doing actually now what he's supposed to do in this situation, but he's doing it on top of the mistakes from Mustasun's FK. Mustasun are using so many of their resources and not getting that much from it. Now for the top side, this turret is going to fall quickly with the Rift, Rift Herald on it. So this is going to be a lot of gold for Sleeping if he is able to get the Rift Herald there, though. Yeah, sure, it's going to come in with towards the top side with the Galio ulti, so they could go for some sort of a play here. At least they're going to be safe if Maid goes for the dive, although Tower is going to be taking a bunch of damage here. You can see Shred making his way there with the Hero's Entrance up, but they're just going to be giving the Tower Plates over to Sleeping. Yeah, those, that was a bit of gold turret, almost dead, but 
as Shred was moving top side and sleeping, knowing this was happening, knowing that there was no Galio bot side, it's going to back off and not going to finish this turret right now, although this should easily be a first tower blood pickup for him in the top side. And that's a lot of gold in the bank for this Jace that was the first one to die and still looking very healthy. Addict, uh, sorry, Adept. Addict is his old nickname, so I'm going to be going with Adept for now. <laughs> He's been getting a bit of a lead on this Yasuo. They were able to start the snowball going, getting two kills for him, and then they've done nothing. They have not played around this Yasuo, which they could do. I mean, yes, Pris Cornet on this Corky with a flash is going to be very safe in the mid lane, very hard to gank. But trying to get Adept into a side lane and get him in a beneficial 1v1 matchup is going to be the uh, ultimate goal here for, uh, for us to show him that it's not like Adept has been doing a bad job. He's got 140 CS before 13 minutes, so more than 10 CS per minute. But he's really the win condition for us to show him here, and they want to get him into a beneficial matchup in the side lane. Question is, when is that going to be? That's going to be the big decision that they have to make when you send that Yasuo off towards either the top or the bottom lane. Yeah, exactly. On the other side, Ventus Esports are putting a lot of pressure for the top side. Good little outplayer was sleeping, making sure Christ can't even harass this, not getting any damage off on the minion wave. That's the first turret blood, 13 minutes in for Ventus Esports being the down. coming in, four people. One, four. Four people are coming down, Adept as well. Yeah, Marcoon is going hard on this. Going with a big engage now, Quicksit quickly with a good flash going away, but the ultimate is going to stop him in his tracks. Taunt on Adept, but Adept hitting the Steel Tempest and getting the pickup. Now Priest Conan has arrived, heroic entry will come in here. Marcoon going golden, Quicksit are going to go for this. Actually, Quicksit, Priest Conan, I mean, will be able to pick it up, and Adept will chase this one down. Priest Conan flashing away to get out of that fight. Crisis also arrived with this. Adept now going dangerously low. He's being chased down by Sleeping. He's one auto track away, but he will survive it. Will be able to get some HP back with the Triumph and now running for their lives. Here comes the Stand United. Christ, will he be the sacrificial lamb? He's flashing away. Quickset still want to chase this down. He has the exhaust. No flash. Chasing Unforgiven. Spells you're not going to do anything versus that summoner spell and Unforgiven will be taken down. Yeah, spell shield not working that exhaust and unfortunately for Unforgiven. That was a lot of interesting plays happening. Big thing for uh, Asushan. There was two kills more. Went over to Adept. So he's four and zero on this Yasuo. Wow, a lot of things went down in the end. TP is just coming in in time for Ventus. Chris Corner came in with a TP on the cork and had the package, which was very impactful because that both allowed him to get away using both package flash and stopwatch and all the damage that went down from the package. We used to call that like a small equalizer, like a small rumble ulti because that's how much damage it will deal and it almost took down a death there. Yeah, exactly. And I'm a little bit worried about Assassin's FK taking a fight, going for a big dive when they know that ability is up. Now finding sleeping out of Position sleeping goes down quickset, not able to save him. Now taking a lot of CC. True shot barrage though is going to hit everyone. Shred is going low. He needs to juke back and forth, avoiding most of the damage, but finally being taken down. You can't dodge the auto attacks. Priestcunet is there. Good spell shield is going to block most of the damage on Unforgiven. But Ventus Esports now getting a few kills and getting into the lead seat for this game. Also picking up this infernal dragon, unless Marcoon can steal it. Yeah, these teams just gonna keep fighting. Marcoon is gonna go for this. It's not even. Yeah, he does actually have vision in the pit, but he's oh, gonna get caught. Yeah, out. Yeah, Marcoon overstaying his welcome. He did not have enough vision. He did not have his team behind him going in for that steal. He had no chance whatsoever to get into range. Yeah, that was really difficult for him to be able to make that work. A bit surprised that he even went for it, knowing that he's alone versus four people there. And Infernal and Mountain going over to Ventus here is really big for them, because we mentioned how good of a sieging comp they got when you're grouping up and trying to siege down towers with Ezreal, Cork, and Jace. Those towers are going to be going down in seconds with the Mountain Dragon on the team, also with the uh, Infernal, which is going to be allowing them some really good scaling on a team comp that already scales pretty well. Ezreal, Cork, what else can you say? Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of scaling going on here. With the Finnish Trinity Force on Priest Conant, he has so much damage, even in comparison to a Jasu who's starting to stack up the crit build, of course. As Jasu has a lot of damage himself, adept up about 1.5k almost. Gold versus Priest Conant, he is the one to pick up most of the kills on his team, but he is the one player 
that has all of that gold. For the rest of the team, they are kind of faltering, even though Sleepy has died a lot, and Kreis is doing what he's supposed to on this Scion, Sleeping still being able to handle the top side. Remember that he got the first Tower of Blood, they put a lot of pressure up there, and Sleeping is still able to split versus Kreis. Now Sleeping also having his teleport up before Kreis has his. Yeah, that's a good matchup for Sleeping. Still is kind of able to force Kreisy out, get tower damage, get Kleptomancy gold. And you mentioned it, Adept is the big key for us to soon here, both because he's so far ahead in the um, in the kills, but also got some good farming, getting the uh, tower there in the mid lane with a lot of tower plates as well. So he's definitely heading gold, and that's an infinity edge buy. And I was just going to mention that I think the point when you really want to start to get Adept into a side lane is when he finishes that Infinity Arch. When he's got that big two-item power spike, is when Yasuo is getting so, so strong. So I would not be opposed at all to send him towards the uh, top or bottom lane here, but looks like he's gonna keep going mid for a while still. That just means that Sushun needs to play around this mid lane, need to try to make plays happen. And they've got the tools, they've got the Sign ulti to be able to flank, they've got the Gragas with Flash soon up, and then they've got the Galio for follow-up engage and a Sivir ulti just to make all of that engage easier. So they need to do that, but they need to do it with Adept. Yeah, absolutely. Adept is definitely the key for his team. And just sitting in mid lane farming is not going to really give them any juice of all of that gold that he's been able to pick up. But as it seems, FK still just farming up now, playing much slower than earlier. Markoon has been able to do what he wanted to do and gotten a few kills off on the map. Markoon going with the ultimate, instantly jumping in with this, and you see all of that damage and all of the focus. That's a point and click ability now for Adept to get in with his ultimate as Markoon simply just drops the cask and doesn't even care which way the enemy is going. Yeah, and that makes it so easy to play Gragas because you can throw out the ult to make him go whatever wa way possible because you got a 6 and 0 Yasuo. He's just going to be killing whoever that ultimate hits. And now it's on to sleeping, and he has 0 and 4 on this Jace. We've been talking so much about him as like the uh, Joker for the team almost. He's either going to be the one to snowball and win the game for them, or he's going to be the one to lose the game for them. I, kind of. I mean, that's kind of harsh, but I, I do agree with what you're saying. I mean, he's been I mean, doing a lot of good things as well. Yeah, absolutely. No, but I, but I agree with you. Both. But I mean, definitely. I mean, sleeping when he plays well, he plays so well. But right now, this is the kind of situation you see him in. Sort of playing like he is ahead when he is falling behind, not respecting the enemy and just getting himself caught from time to time. And yeah, this is sort of a trend we have been seeing from this top laner. And you said it. He is definitely the Joker of the team. On the other hand, in mid lane, I want to give it to Priest Conant for sure. He died one versus one early, but after that, he has definitely been respecting Adept. Sure, he said that he would be the better mid laner, but as soon as he falls behind, he respects the matchup, just been pushing, just been farming. And I'm so happy, Sang, because finally, Ostersund, they're sending the Sivir and Galio to the mid lane, and just gonna mention that means they're gonna send the Yasuo to a side lane, and then but he's running no, down. No, he's not. They're not going. So they're to. gonna look for a hard engage. They're gonna look for a Cyan ulti or an E flash from the Gragas. I just actually saw that the Cyan ulti is on cooldown, so they're gonna be looking for an engage with the depth because there's no reason you send him mid lane right now when Unforgiven and Shred are already there. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they need to try to get fights when they group up like this. Otherwise, this same thing is just going to happen. We have seen this two times in a row now. Simply Ventus Esports using their timing window to push down a turret when no one is. They're taking it down in seconds and then backing off, getting this global gold and Adept responding by moving to the lane that already has the dead turret. I mean, the turret was dead. There was no way that he was able to stop it. And now, if they can get this dragon, this would be very important for them, though. Yeah, Mountain Dragon's going to be really good for us as soon as well. Redemption going in for some scouting. Yeah. And there is the Smash of Raccoon. Not going to be a steal. A lot of attempts were made, though. True Shot Barrage and the little rockets from Priest Kunat. And they had a very important Mountain Dragon to have. Just to be able to be equalized versus your opponent when it comes to the Mountain Dragons. Looking at the Baron, it is completely dark. Yeah, Unforgiven is in the bottom lane, so he does have the TP, so he's going to be able to get over here quite quickly. But I think Ventus just wants to run to the Baron, get some vision there, secure, deny the vision from the enemy team. And the Baron Dance has officially started. And Baron Dancing with a poke comp versus a hard engage comp. That's going to be difficult for both teams because for Ostashun, you can't just walk around here without making too many things happen because that's going to be accelerated shock blasts, quirky rockets, Mystic Charts from the Astro hitting you over and over and getting you low. 
on the other hand, Ventus, you need to be so careful to never get engaged on by something like a Gragas E-Flash or a Cyan Engage. Absolutely. And we're finally now seeing that Adept has moved top lane versus Priest Conant, although Priest Conant has enough wave clear to stop this turret from going down. Yeah, the Adept. <clears throat> the thing with the E1v1 matchup here is that Priest Conant is fine as long as it sits under the tower, but he can't really ever walk up out from the tower range, so the top lane prior or the ability to roam from the top lane is always going to be in favor of us to soon. Predator now will be used. Marcoon chasing this down. Priest Conant, though, sticking around. Turret finally will go down. Priest Conant gets slowed by the explosive cast. Made simply going to arrive. Toss an axe, like, get out of my swamp, and then walk it back again. Shrek skin for all our right, please. That would be pretty cool, though. Get out of my swamp. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. Like Quix is taking a little bit of harass here. Quix has been doing well on this Shen pick for the bot lane. Not see exactly what happened there earlier, but Shred used the flash to get over the Baron pit. So I just think he got caught inside the Baron versus Crystal, and then the Baron was hitting him as well. So he actually used the flash on the Galio, which is very important because Galio is one of the most flash reliant champions. That W, sure, you can do a bit of zoning with it, but without the flash, it's not really that engaged threat which it is otherwise. Yeah, absolutely. It's so important to have your Flash to be able to go for these hard engages on Galio. Although he has this heroic entry still, you have the Scion, you have the Jasso together with the Gragas to start fights. So there are a lot of ways that since FK could force a fight around an objective, but they need to decide, are we going for this? Are we going to send Adept into a side lane? Do we want to go for it? They get the final one on sleeping. They get a lot of engage onto him. Adept is godlike now, taking some damage though in this fight. Instantly forcing Ventus to back off. Priest Kunat though wants to deal a little bit more damage here with a little poke back and forth. He has so much damage now with this build. It's going to take a little bit of harass back though as well. But that was a good pick. Again on sleeping, over pushing, not having any defensive items at all. Yeah, had uh, the flash available as well, so maybe could have used that to get away still. You can see how strong this poke comp is because you just lost a member and you're still sieging this offensively. Yeah, absolutely. So since FK though, they used every single ability they had to pick off sleeping. And using all of those key abilities, they don't really have any other way to engage now. So getting that one pick, Ventus Esports know that they can just still walk up. There are no real ways to handle them, them still. So getting a lot of damage up on that turret still. You can see Adept here is pretty big, just went back and bought a Guardian Angel. He's been getting all of these kills, so he's going to be the strong point of the team. Are they going to be starting the Baron, or are they just going to be sweeping out Vision around it? I think it's the... Uh, First thing I mentioned, just oh sorry, the latter. Just gonna be controlling vision here. Don't really want to start up against this poke comp because you're gonna be getting quite low from the Baron. The Baron's gonna be reducing your resistance as well, as well. and then the poke is gonna come in from Jay's Quark Yesreal. So need to get away from that. And speaking of the Yesreal, that's kind of like the uh, thing we've not talked so much here. But Crystal actually has as big of a shutdown gold or of a bounty as Adept. So that means he's not been doing quite as well on this Yesreal, but he's been getting a lot of gold. That's both from farm, from four kills, and from the kleptomancy. So he is really big on the Cesar. You can see how much he was hurting earlier on. Yeah, absolutely. And Kreisland is one of those players with all of that experience we talked about that knows that even if they fall behind, even if they have a bad fight down bot lane, he's still doing what he's supposed to on this s -reel. Still very safe and using all of his abilities to simply poke and prod and make sure that since FK can't really go for any of these big engages. Since FK, like we said earlier, they have gotten a few engages off, but most of the time it's all on sleeping. They use every single ability on that one player and then sort of need to back off and they don't really have anything else that they can use. So sleeping is still actually fine. I mean, he's behind a little bit, but he's up a lot of CS. He's still handling the side wave and he's still pushing, still doing exactly what he is supposed to do on this Jace. Yeah, he's going to be able to pressure this sign in the 1v1 for a very long time. Kind of, yeah, I'm not sure if they should actually be sending the Adept down here. I think Adept should actually go through the top lane if they want to go for split push here, just because he does not have the TP on this Yasuo. He is extremely big, though. 
And looking at the entire team, you did mention it. They need to get engaged with more than one person because you can see what happened earlier. He got the engage on one person. Oh, he's going to go for Crystal oh, here. Oh, Adept finds Chris. Lun knocks him up in the air. The shutdown is there. And Adept has so the much damage. damage. Flashing forward, finding Quicks and knocking up in the air as well. One more auto attack is going to finish the job. And with the Steel Tempest, everything just falters. One mistake in the mid lane, Kreeslin gets caught, and all of a sudden now it's up to Priest Kunit to handle this all by his lonesome. Just barely getting away from Kreis and being chased down, but no minions in this wave means that they can't really go for an inhibitor. But Baron is still up, sleeping still down bot lane, he has teleport. Yeah, TP4 sleeping and Pris Cornet being up as well. This could be a risky Baron because Markun was so low on this Gragas. Is this going to be a potential steal coming in? There is the TP for Crystal as well. Can they actually go for this? Pris Cornet is getting knocked up in the air. He can't really steal this on his own. Or can he though? No, he's not going to be able to. But here comes the fight follow-up. Christ being the main focus. Dan United coming in as well. And Christ trying to juke back and forth. Managing to just barely get out. Unforgiven blocking most of the damage oh, with the so spell scary. shield. But this is still going to be a fight. Quickset being the main focus now. Blocking all of that damage. Trisha Barrage hits everything. But Adept still on the front line. Still getting all his damage off. Finally, Christian fights him on the side. Adept, I think, is not going to be able to handle this all on his own. He will be shut down why Priest Kunis to just arrive with the teleport, and that means finally Shred is the only one left alive on this top side as Markoon was the only one to get away with the Baron buff. Yeah, being able to actually get Baron buff on one person is very important. That provides a lot of value still, but wow, what a scary fight for Östersund. They went for the Baron, which I think was the correct choice, but then not sure how they were dealing with Priest Cornet there afterwards. Wow, that was just too intense in the earlier fight in the mid lane where Adept just one-shots Crystal. I mean, he's an Ezreal with a flash, with an Olaf and Shen there to peel for him. And Adept just says, uh-uh, I'm just going to be straight <laughs> up one-shotting you on this Exactly, Yasuo. he just walks up and like, okay, I'm just going to right-click you now and you're going to go down. Actually, he threw in a few of those Steel Tempests as well, so i got to give him that. But yeah, Adept is a monster now on this Jasso. Finally, the shutdown goal, though, went to Priest Konat, so he got a lot of gold from that. Now he is the one that they want to shut down. He's worth a thousand gold in bounty. But you said it earlier, with this Baron, uh, with the Baron buff, you have a lot of magic damage from Chris Lune and Priest Kunet that you can neglect with these Baron Empowered minions. And you have, of course, Sleeping on the other hand, but Sleeping is not the main problem for them. Oh, Priest Kunet is going to go for oh, the Oh, actually, with the Flash, in. flashing forward and get almost with the Rocket. In the end, not going to be able to finish Unforgiven, but this is how strong Priest Kunit is right now. He has the Infinity Edge himself, he has the Rapid Fire Cannon, and has been having this Trinity Force for the past 20, not 20, but 15 minutes or so. So he is looking definitely strong on this Corky. Yeah, it was so important for Aventus to go for the one, to get the 1k gold shot on to Chris Cornet. That is by far the best member to get that influx of gold on. This is still going to be the push for us to show. And I'm not sure what they can actually do. Actually do. They got the siege minions, but just sieging against this comp is going to be pretty easy. It's going to be pretty hard, sorry, with all the poke. I'm going to think you almost need to go for the dive. And I'm not sure if Markun intended for Adept to use the ultimate onto that Gragas barrel because now they're not going to be able to do anything while sleeping is taking their bot side. Yeah, Markun tried to make that happen going with the ultimate on Chris Loon, but Chris Loon just, I mean, he has an arcane shift out of that and was too far away for Adept to do anything versus him. And Christ is going to be forced to use his teleport to arrive to defend this lane. And Sleeping, yet yeah, again, is just happy doing what he is supposed to do, just splitting all the time and letting the rest of his team handle these minion waves. And I take back what I said earlier because I thought that, well, a lot of magic damage from Pork, a lot of magic damage from Astral. It didn't matter at all. Those Baron Empowered minions died in seconds, no matter yeah, what. Yeah, that Corky poke does so much. And this is what I've been talking about with the poke comp versus the engage comp. You can't just stand there and take the Corky rockets to take the Corky cues and the Astral cues. You need to fight the engages, but it's not the easiest thing to do. You've got to just press the go button with the Righteous Glory on the Scion, with the Silver Ultimate, with the Flash soon to be up on the Gragas. You need to make this sort of engages happen. I mean, Gragas got a Shirelia's Reverie. How often do you see that? It's because the only thing they need to do is get these hard engages in. Yeah, absolutely. And they have so much movement speed to use to get these hard engages. But I feel like Markoon hasn't really been that on point with his ultimates. He's been able to catch Sleeping a couple of times, or has Sleeping been able to catch himself, really, as Markoon <laughs> has just been walking up to him with those ultimates, saying, hey, man, and getting the ultimate off, pressing the R. But apart from that, Markoon has not been able to do that much 
on his Gragas. He needs to get bigger ultimates, or Kreis needs to get a good ultimate off. And we're getting 31 minutes in, and we're talking so much about the potential for soon to throw Adept in a side lane. Finally, they're starting to let him go towards the top lane and get solo farm and solo XP, but I think this is like, they needed to do this 10 minutes earlier. I mean, he went top lane for a little bit earlier on, but I think Adept, when you got a Yasuo that's 10 and 1, I mean, he's incredibly big. You could see what he did to Crystal earlier. That's a Crystal with some armor as well from the, uh, uh, the Iceborne Gauntlet, and he was just shredded completely by Adept. I think you need to give him the room in a side lane or just find some hard engages around him because that's how you use the Yasuo really well. Yeah, I mean, I kind of, to be honest, was expecting Adept to simply face him in this very long bot lane and run him down with all these minions there. I Maybe I'm, th I'm not really thinking clearly about this, but for me looking at it, I was expecting that to happen for Adept, simply to run down sleeping, kill him solo over and over again, not allowing sleeping to be there in the fights and I mean, there aren't really that many ways that Ventus can capitalize on it while it happens. Oh, but sleeping flash. actually, wow, flashing away from that situation and managing to get away. An attempt for an ultimate by Kreis, but sleeping is not going to be there anymore. And sleeping manages to get out with three members down bot lane. As soon as FK is going to lose the top side turret. Yeah, getting solo gold and solo XP there for Quirky on the minion waves and the tower as well. And Baron's coming up in 30 seconds and they just conceded so much pressure around the vision uh, in the top set and around the Baron because they went down bottom lane with so many people. So now they're going to have to get back towards the top side, try to secure Baron vision to start the Baron dance because it's spawning in 15 seconds. And with the Mountain Dragon for both teams, they're both going to be able to kill this quite quickly, but especially Ventus with his Corky who just went back and bought a Guardian Angel. He's incredibly scary on this very strong mid lane pick. And it's starting to really look like a Priest Cornet special because I've not seen anyone else in this tournament bust out the Corky. He's been doing it multiple times and he's been doing it so, so well. Absolutely. Sleeping also setting up the push in the bot lane. So if Assassin's FK wants to do something with this, they need to yeah, do it to. instantly. Yeah, they're starting the Baron. They don't want to force this fight, but are they going to be able to handle this? I'm not sure. The fight will happen here. Going to flash forward, Ooh. not going to be able to steal the Baron, and May sacrificing his life for this. Shred, though, will also be sacrificed, trying to flash away. Flashing straight forward and not going to be able to get away from the Rockets. Markoon as well, also in a bad spot here. Tries to ultimate a depth. You're moving forward now, but look at the damage from Priest Conan. The auto attacks in the air will do so much damage using the Valkyrie now with the package to get away. Adept going golden. Is he going to survive this? Juking back and forth, but the auto attacks are just too much for him to handle. Unforgiven still sticking around and trying to help him just a little bit, but now Unforgiven might be the one that goes down instead. He's able to get the kill versus Kreeslund, but in the base, Christ is fighting it up versus sleeping. Both Crystalline and Unforgiven died at the same time there, so it's going to be sleeping and Priest Cornet pushing, pushing Solo versus Crazy Markoon. It's up in 20 seconds, Shred in 5 seconds, so they're at least going to be able to get an, hit nib, an inhib now. And then it's going to be double inhib for this team of Ventus, and they've got such a strong lead. Baron buff on one player for us to soon. Christy was able to get that, which is going to be quite huge, because again, getting Baron buff on one person is enough to boost up the minions in one way. Yeah, absolutely, and it will stall the game a little bit for them to get their inhibitors back. It will be much more difficult for Ventus to simply just close it up by going up for the top lane and getting that inhibitor, but they're going to get their second Infernal Dragon for this game. So since FK, good focus and pressure on these Barons, good smite control from Markoon, but in the fights after, they kind of have a hard time deciding what they want to do. Do we want to disengage or do we want to fight it? Because we see Adept move forward. We see Markoon trying to get out. We see Kreis run away. Shred was already taken out before that fight even started. And then Unforgiven sort of sticks around with Adept. Kind of wants to fight, kind of not. And in the end, somehow just barely manages to pick that uh, pick down Kreisland as well. Otherwise, that situation could have been a completely different one as Kreisland also did have his teleport up. Yeah, I gotta agree with you there. It's like they're not really... Un I mean, they're playing really well when it comes to the mechanics, when it comes to the individual plays, but it's like they don't really know what their comp is doing, what their comp strengths are, because they've got a very good engage comp. We mentioned all the tools. They got Gragas E Flash with the Shirelias, they got a Cyan ulti with a Righteous Glory, they got a Saver ulti, they got the Galio follow-up engage, so they got so many engage options, so good so many good ways to gap closing and set up for this Yasuo, who is really big. They've managed to snowball this Yasuo. He's been getting a huge lead. 
but it's like they don't understand that that's where their strengths are up against this poke comp. They're just sitting and taking a lot of poke, and here they're finally doing what I wanted them to. Going for another fight, flashing on Chris Lundstad United is going to be there, but will it be there in time? Yes, it is, as he is resurrecting, going golden as he landing down goes. Oh, he's going will be one to get the first kill on Markoon. Now still chasing this as Chris Lund just barely gets out. Made, though, taking too much damage from the TP, the base, 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 the the base, 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 the now, focusing down Kreeslund, but there is one more damage dealer in here. Adept Sleeping is coming in, is there. So Adept is there. Will he be able to get there in time? One Steel Tempest should do the insane. job. Sleeping is so low, and they managed to just barely kill him. But Kreeslund still want to go for this. It's one versus three, though. He can't really do it. Unforgiven, oh. there's so much damage. Both, Both of them, the these Guardian time. Angels, popping at the same time. Who has the most damage? It is Kreeslund. With the Phosphorus Bomb managing to get the kill, getting away now, finally rocketing the air also, smelling Adept moving up, but that could have been the end of the game, folks. Wow, that was so insanely close right there for Ventus, going for the Nexus kill with Priest Corn, it's, it's just keeping the entire team busy, and then Crystal and TPing in with like 10 HP, trying to go <laughs> for the Nexus kill as the Shun just barely getting back in time. Can we just check out how healthy their Nexus is? Because Sleeping is going to be up in 15 seconds with TP up on the J. So if he's going to go for some sort of backdoor, it's going to be very important to watch the health of the Nexus. Yeah, I also want to know, hey, Nexus will just slightly regenerate yep. some HP, but there are no turrets anywhere right now on the side of Asun's FK. So they need to be so careful. You can see the two control wards in their base. I can bet they have been sweeping to double time around their Nexus just to make sure there are no sneaky little wards around on the sides, and they need to wait for these inhibitors to respawn. And even when the inhibitors have respawned, I mean, for anyone really with these three teleports on the side of Ventus Esports, use a good teleport at a good time, get there, they will be able to finish this game in about, I think, like 10 seconds is the window that they would need to finish this game. Yeah, max 10 seconds. Yeah, max 10 seconds. That is all they need. And now, are they going to play for that? Or are they going to try to go for more of these team fights? As both of these teams are playing the fights a little bit sloppy. I gotta agree with you right there. I think that I like the thought that Estation had going into that fight earlier when they just went for the hard engage, used all of their tools to try to burst down Crystal before the fight started. That is what they need to do with this composition. Didn't have, were not quite able to pull it off. And in the end, some important things to note is that Chrysland has his flash back up. It was down just until just now, while Markoon and Chrysie both used flash in that last fight to find the engages. So Crystal and Priscornet, the big two carries for Ventus, having their flashes available, while the engages for Estesund are without the flash, that's going to be key for next fight. Also, Infernal Dragon and Baron spawning at almost the exact same time. These two teams need to decide what to go for, and I'm not sure if Assassin's FK will dare to venture out on the map. Sleeping has his teleport. I'm not sure if they can even defend this Baron. If they do, they need to fight so decisively and so fast, and they need to do it somehow handling Sleeping pushing the bot side. Yeah, third inhib just respawned though, so any potential backdoor would need to get a inhib as well as the next. We can see this Baron is just dying in seconds to Priscorn and Crystal with the uh, Mountain Dragon as well. Six item Quirk, six item as well. They are so big right now. And that Baron just went down really quickly. Are they going to be going for the Dragon as well before they try to go for the push? It is the Elder and it's going to be a fight. Oh, Ooh. Markoon tries to find something with his ultimate yet again, but Sleeping was not even close to it. So you can tell right now, Ustun's FK, they are so nervous. They're playing like with all of their nerves. Like They're so tense. Markoon just barely attempting that. They have now uh, just a couple of seconds before he has his ultimate up again. But this will be next fight is the one. That is the final fight. And I just want to say that I'm so impressed also by sleeping on this Jace. He is so far behind, just been dying everywhere and still having such a huge impact on the game. But since FK can't really commit to these fights because sleeping is always there with the split push, has been getting, I think, like, five turrets or something this game something like yeah, that for sure he's been getting a lot of towers need to see the team fight soon though for ventus because they just went back and bought Ezreal picking up a sonia's hourglass that's how scary he is of getting dove he realizes he needs to stay alive in these fights he's going to be able to contribute a lot elder dragon about two-thirds of that left 
and it's extremely big for this team because you've got a great scaling comp with several damage dealers and double infernal with the elders so that elder dragon is going to be boosting these infernal dragon bonuses even more crystal and priest are going to be doing insane damage ostersund they are definitely behind and the only way they're going to be able to win this game is if they find a hard engage on Chris Cornet or Chris Lund. I don't think it's even enough to catch out Sleeping because the rest of the base is just going to be dying. Yeah, exactly. Sleeping instantly used some later for Ruin King. Just to run away in that situation. Oh, Adept is fighting Chris Cornet. Yeah, Adept up top side of Chris Cornet is fighting Adept. Adept needs to run away. Marcoon as well. He's gone way too low for this. Sleeping is going to move forward, get the inhibitor and then flash away. Two redemptions used just to keep him alive. That's his second inhibitor. Now Marcoon is the main focus. Priest couldn't manage to pick him up. And the true shot barrage is huge right there. Priest couldn't also chasing this down. This is the final fight with this empowered team and with the focus on the Nexus. That is the game. And Ustasun's FK could not handle it all the way. They played a really good early game, in my opinion. They were able to get Adept to 11 and 2 on the Yasuo. They had a good engage comp, and then they quite not able to pull it off in the end. Then this just shows who are the stronger individual mechanical players and the more experienced ones who knows what to do in these very tough situations. Like when you're hitting the Nexus, when the back doors are going down, when you're fighting in several spots at once, that's when Ventus are showing that their experience matters. Absolutely. As soon as FK had the lead, from the start, they were able to get what they wanted, and then simply, they couldn't handle all the pressure that Ventus put down. Ventus just showing up with all that experience you're talking about, and showing that it doesn't matter if we're falling behind in kills. We can still get ahead with all of these objectives. We're unlocking every single turret, getting all of that control. We're gonna sacrifice sleeping just for, just for the fun of it a couple of times, and then he's still gonna be able to push the bot lane. He's still going to be able to handle the Scion matchup, no problem at all, and just Ventus Ventus, I think Ventus and Estesun's FK playing to their greatest strengths, and when they do that, Ventus just comes out slightly ahead. Yeah, it was a really close game, and it was a really good game in terms of entertainment value. I think a lot of very interesting things happened. The, one of the key for Estesun is that, I mentioned it so much, I'm starting to sound like a broken record, but they need to get adept into a sideline yeah, when absolutely. you're getting this far ahead on the Yasuo. Try to sort of forced the fights, which kind of worked out. They were able to catch out sleeping a couple times, but in the end, it was not enough to transition. And looking into next game, there's so many things that you could do in the draft. Absolutely. I, I got a lot more things to say I want to say to you about this, but actually, we're going to just hold that for a second, go to a quick break, and we'll be back with game two in a couple of minutes.